Hi guys, it's Miss Humphrey here with a math video. Today we're going to be talking about generating equivalent fractions. So yesterday we talked about identifying equivalent fractions and today we're going to come up with them on our own. So I'm going to review what we talked about yesterday because I actually got to go to school and pick up some supplies that I think are going to make these lessons much easier for us. So let's read this word problem. Sarah needs three-fourths cup of dish soap to make homemade bubble solution. Her measuring cups are divided into eighths. What fraction of the measuring cup should Sarah fill with dish soap? So I'm gonna start by pulling up my fourths. So you can see on here, these are broken up into one, two, three, four, okay? And she needs three-fourths a cup of dish soap. So this is one fourth, two fourth, three fourths. So I'm gonna pop off the top because she only needs three fourths, okay? So remember, if this was a whole, now what I have is three fourths. But her measuring cup is in eighths. So what I need to do is I need to take my eighths. So again, this is broken up, this is a whole, this one, sorry, I flipped the right way. This is one whole. Do you see how this is broken up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths? Okay, so I'm gonna take these eighths and measure how many eighths do I need to make three fourths? So I'm gonna make them even. I'm gonna pop off these two. Do you agree that these are now even? So how many eighths do I have? six okay so that means three fourths is equal to six eighths i want you to think about that for a minute how many eighths do i need to make one fourth looking here one of my fourths is how many eighths one fourth is equal to two eighths. So what I would need to do is if I know one fourth is equal to two eighths, I could actually use multiplication to find the answer. So let's say all I knew was that she had three fourths cup of dish soap to make her homemade bubbles. I know that one fourth is two eighths. So, I could say two, four, six, eighths equals one fourth. The other way you could do this is I know to get from four to eight, what do I multiply? I multiply by two. So if I multiply the bottom by two, I need to multiply the top by two. Let me show you an example in writing that I think will be easier. So we needed three-fourths, but I wanted it to be with a denominator of eights. So what did I need to do to the four to get to eight? I needed to multiply by two. Four times two equals eight. Do you agree? So whatever I do to the bottom, I also need to do to the top. So if I multiply the bottom by two, I need to multiply the top by two. Three times two is Six, and that's exactly what we got, six eighths. So instead of having to draw it out every time, we can now use multiplication. I'm gonna show you a few more. Let's try this one. If I have two thirds and I want it to be broken up into sixes. So I'm going to start by demonstrating this again with my visual just to see if that helps anybody. Here I have two thirds. So remember this is always my whole. And if I had one more I'd have three thirds but I took that one away. 
So I have two thirds, but I want it to be in sixes. So I'm gonna take my sixes and I want it to line up. How many sixes does it take to make one third? One, two, one, two. So I'm gonna pop these top ones out. And two thirds is equal to one, two, three, four sixes. So <clears throat> let's check out the math here. How do I get from three to six? If I'm talking in thirds, but I want to get to sixes, I need to do three times two equals six. And so if I do times two on the bottom, I have to do times two on the top. So two times two is four. And is that what I got? Four sixes. Let's try another. This one we're gonna do it's a little bit trickier. Actually, I want you to try this one on your own. This one's not so tricky, but I want you to try it on your own. So pause your screen and try this one. What do I need to multiply this by to get this? Whatever you do here, you have to do up here. I hope you're coming back. You've tried it on your own. You paused. What do I multiply five by to get 10? Five times two. If I do five times two down here, I have to do five times two up here, which is six. So, and I'll demonstrate that again. I have my fives here. And I have, it says that I have three fifths. So one, two, three. And I want to use my tens. Let me find my tens. I want to use my tens. Next to it. And you'll notice this is the same pattern we've been doing. It takes two tens to make one fifth. So if I pop off the top, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's exactly what we said. Okay, I'm gonna do one more that's a little trickier because so far I've only been doing multiplying by two, but this works with any amount. So if I'm going from one third and I want to know how many twelfths it is. I'm going to ask myself, what do I multiply 3 by to get 12? 3 times 4 gives me 12. So I need to multiply this by 4. And 1 times 4 is 4. So that means 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. Let's test it. I'm going to make sure... We need a third. I have a one third here. Oh no, that's a fourth. One third. And I have my twelfths here. Let's measure it. I'm going to pop it off so that they're the same. One third is one, two, three, four twelfths. They're exactly the same. So tonight on your homework, I'm going to give you some problems and I'm going to ask you to do the multiplication and find the answers. If you have any questions, post below and I can hold a Google Meet with you to answer any questions as long as you ask. Bye guys, I'll see you later for science.